Hey guys, I just want to start this video by saying thank you guys so much. I began producing a bunch of videos at the beginning of this year with the intentions and the goal of reaching 1,000 subscribers by the end of 2019. And thanks to your guys' phenomenal support, I was able to absolutely crush that goal. I've already hit that goal and it's not even July yet. As a thank you, I'm going to be doing a 1,000 sub giveaway. One lucky sub will get to choose from this list of Razer Synapse 3 compatible devices. The idea is that I can give someone a little bit extra, something to go with their keyboard and help light up their setup. This giveaway is absolutely not sponsored. It will be funded from my own pocket. It's just my way of giving back to you guys. For today's video, I'll be doing a design that is well overdue. Um, four months ago, Big Man Jobs asked me if I could do a PlayStation logo and an Xbox logo. Uh, a couple months after that, uh, Gavin Fair asked me if I could do an Xbox logo because he doesn't have a PlayStation. So I initially avoided the Xbox logo because it's so rounded and I wasn't sure how I was going to get that roundedness into a keyboard lighting effect. I've since learned a ton about Razer Synapse and I now feel like I am able to make that for you guys. As always, there will be a download link in the description below. But if you wanna see how I made it, change some stuff up yourself, maybe change some colors. Keep watching this video. I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how I did it. All right, guys, this is Xbox. All right guys, so here we go with the Xbox logo. So first thing you're gonna wanna do is click on the effect layer here and change this to a static. We're gonna select all of our keys here, every piece of lighting that you have for Razer products. Keep it green, but we're gonna lower the brightness down. And that's all we're gonna do for static. Now I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and focus more on the keyboard, focus more on the logo. I'm gonna hold control and I'm just gonna scroll wheel in a little bit, just like that. So now we're gonna go ahead and add a wave layer. Okay, so I've brought up the Xbox logo here in Photoshop and I'm basically gonna show you kinda how I'm gonna break this design up. Uh, I'm gonna break it up into three different sections. I'm gonna do this little top piece first and then I'm gonna do the two sides and then I'm gonna do this bottom piece. And what I'm gonna do with uh, a series of different wave layers is I'm basically going to just chop these little pieces up into little tiny waves so I'll be sectioning out these pieces kinda like this so I'll be doing the top piece with four different layers and same thing with uh, the sides and the bottom so with that image in mind what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the top part of the logo. So with your wave layer selected, go ahead and select uh, some of these keys here in the center of your keyboard. And this layer that we're working on right now is actually going to be the widest part of that top section. So I'm gonna double click on this layer and I'm gonna name this top one. And with these keys selected here, I'm gonna click on this color drop down, and I'm gonna make a three tone gradient. I'm gonna make this middle white and I'm gonna hit the plus sign so now I have two white nodes. I'm gonna make each of the end nodes invisible. Now towards the end of the bar but not at the very end, you wanna bring this in just a little bit. Um, we're gonna drag this color gradient up pretty high of about here. And real quick, let's just change our angle to zero degrees make our width 200% and change our speed down to four. And we're also going to add a three second pause. So now you can see I have a single line of white keys that kind of goes upward. That looks good right there. I'm gonna hit save. And now I'm going to duplicate this layer and I'm gonna change the name of this new layer to top two. 
I'm going to hold control and select the affected keys that are on the far left and the affected keys that are on the far right and I'm going to hit the delete key. Double click on an affected key and it'll select all of the affected keys. And we are going to click on our color gradient and we're just going to drag this all the way up to the top. just like this and this is going to kind of give us the rounded effect at the top of our logo once again right click on top two and duplicate that layer so now we're going to go back to layer top one and we're going to duplicate this layer and we're going to rename this to top three once again we're going to hold control and we are going to delete out the effect on the outside keys. Double click on there. And we're going to drop this color gradient down a little bit this time. Down to the left. So now we're going to make that point at the bottom edge of our top piece. So right click on top three and duplicate that layer and rename this to top four. We double click and highlight all of our keys and we're gonna deselect the ones we wanna keep. So just deselect this one string here and then hit delete. So now when we double click on these, we can click on our gradient and we can drop this down a little bit more. Now this is going to represent the top part of our Xbox logo. Now we're gonna duplicate top four and then we're going to add a group right here. And we're going to name this new group top. And we're going to drag all of our top layers into this folder. This new copy we are going to rename to left right. Now double click on the affected keys here and copy that. Then hold control and you're gonna select this line of keys right here. So that looks good to me, I'm going to paste. And looking at this center line, I see it kinda of gets a little bit close to my right side here. So I'm gonna click back into my top group here, go to top four, and I'm gonna select this, copy it, and I'm going to paste it in the line next to it. That way it's more evenly split. And I'm just gonna delete this row right here. With your new left right layer, go ahead and hold control, select these affected keys in the middle and hit the delete key. I'm gonna hit save. So now what we're gonna do is we're slowly going to make our keys wider as we go down for the left and right section. So duplicate your left right layer, rename that to left right two, and we're going to highlight all of our affected keys and copy Hold control and we're going to select another column of keys just on the inside of these keys, just like this. And paste in your effect. Click on your color drop down and we are just going to slide the lighting down a little bit farther. That looks good. I'm going to hit save. Now we're going to duplicate this layer and we're going to rename this to left right three. Click on your affected keys hold control and we're going to do one key on each side and this is going to be the widest part of the left and right sides so just go one key to the left and one key to the right of each side and paste in your effect click on that color drop down and you're just going to drag your gradient down even farther once again i'm going to duplicate left right three and rename this to left right four. So with this new effect layer, hold control and you're just gonna select the two inner columns that you have lit. So the affected keys on the inner side, we're gonna select those and delete them. Click on your color drop down, and we're gonna drag this down just a little bit farther. Duplicate this layer, rename to left right five, hold control and Delete out the effect on the inner keys once again. But this time we're going to click on our affected keys, copy them, and we're gonna select as many keys on the outside of this as we can without selecting the shift, enter, 
backspace. These keys that are like double width. I'm gonna hit paste. Click on your color drop down, and we're just gonna drag this down even farther. Duplicate that layer. Rename that to left, right, six. Once again, we're gonna hold control and we're gonna delete out another column of keys with lighting. And left, right, six, these are going to be our affected keys. That looks good. Click on your color drop down and we're going to just keep dragging this down even farther. Duplicate that layer and rename it to left, right, seven. And for the last part of our left and right section, we are going to hold control and we're going to just select off some of the inner keys that are uh, a little bit more inward. So I'm going with these keys. So for my affected keys on left, right, seven, I have these ones here. Click on your color drop down, and we're just gonna drag that even more left. I'm gonna right click on left, right, five and duplicate that layer. Now I'm going to add a group, name this new group to left, right. And I'm gonna drag all my left, right affected layers into this group. So now I have a top group of effect layers and I have a left right group of effect layers. And this copy that we made, we're going to name this bottom. So with this bottom layer chosen, we're going to double click on an affected key, which will select them all. We are going to copy that, select this line of keys right here in the middle and paste in your design. Now hold control again and deselect these keys and hit the delete key. So now it should begin the very top part of your lower bottom section. And we're just gonna do the same thing. We're going to duplicate layers. We're going to make them a little bit wider with the keys and we're going to slowly move the gradient to the left. Copy the affected keys and paste it in all of the keys that border these keys. And we're slowly gonna get wider and wider Go ahead and hit paste and once again just slowly start moving your gradient down go ahead and continue doing this till you get to the very bottom of your bottom portion of the logo and you should have an xbox looking logo so that's going to do it for the bottom section for me i'm going to click on this group make this group bottom and I'm gonna put all of my effects in that bottom folder. And now you can see I have a very clean top, left, right, and bottom effect folders for nice organization. I'm also going to add an audio meter to this. And with your new audio meter effect layer selected, go ahead and hold control. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an audio meter that goes from the bottom up. It'll go vertical. So First thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to hold control and I'm gonna select the lower portions of where my audio meter is going to be. So um, if you have other devices like I do, uh, you can select the uh, bottom pieces of these uh, other devices. I do have the HDK RGB strips, but I don't like to put audio meter on them because it just makes my whole room like flash and get crazy. So if you're into that sort of thing, you can change your HDK. I'm going to leave mine alone. So these are the keys that I'm going to have light up at very low volumes of audio. So with your low volume keys selected, click on the color drop down. And what we're gonna do is we're going to make like a uh, five node gradient. So here's a three node gradient. We're gonna click on the first one and click the addition symbol. Click on your middle node and hit the addition symbol there as well. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an audio meter that is white. And as the audio increases and gets louder, uh, the keys above them are gonna start to light up white as well. So we're gonna have our first node be white. All of our nodes are going to be white on 
all of it. So I have five nodes in there and every single one is white and I'll show you guys why in just a little bit. So I'm going to click on this effect and I'm gonna copy it and then click off of those. And now I'm gonna to go to my next keys up. So the next keys that I want to be affected, that looks good right there. I'm going to paste in my effect. Then after you paste, go ahead and click on your color drop down. And this first node, we're going to make invisible. And we're gonna drag that all the way up until it touches the next one. So now these keys won't light white until the audio is a little bit louder than the previous one. One thing real quick is I kind of screwed up the settings a little bit. So click on this new one that we just made. And what you're gonna do is click this auto box and you're gonna drag your decay down to uh, 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 and hit save. I just think it looks a lot cleaner. So same thing on the previous one that we made double click on the the low points and we're gonna make that auto and we're gonna make the decay 0.1 or 0.2 and I'm gonna hit save with our second level of audio go ahead and copy that and hold control and select all of your third level of audio keys that you want to light up I'm just slowly going up my devices so up my keys as I progress through my audio meter. That looks good. I'm gonna hit save. And now we can test out the audio. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you liked the video, please hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell icon. That way you guys know as soon as I upload new keyboard lighting videos. As always, you can follow me on my social media accounts, both Instagram and Twitter. I always upload teasers of upcoming videos, so make sure you go follow me on those. Thank you guys very much, and I'll see you guys in the next one.